one of the presentations uh, I'm involved in is a pre presentation on the impact of COVID in patients uh, uh, on patients with multiple myeloma. And um, as you know, um, COVID um, is thought to be a successor of the SARS uh, COVID one virus, which caused the SARS virus outbreaks 2002 and 2004, mainly in China. Now we have uh, this virus, uh, which uh, threatens uh, the entire uh, population of our globe. And uh, it is, as you know, it is a um, RNA virus with a short, um, a small RNA genome, which consists of, of about 30,000 nucleobases. It has these typical uh, uh, spikes, uh, which uh, um, actually led to the uh, name coronavirus. It enters the cells uh, um, via a receptor uh, called the ACA2 receptor. And uh, this is um, facilitated uh, by activating a transmembrane serine protease, which cuts uh, one uh, part of the receptor out and this, this enables the virus to enter the cell um, easily and to infect patients. Now we know that patients with myeloma have an impaired, well, many of them uh, have an impaired immune system, uh, mainly because of the disease itself, and in addition, because of uh, specific therapies. So uh, patients with myeloma have an increased risk for infection, and patients with myeloma have, of course, an increased risk for COVID infections and for a more severe course of the disease, and actually, thirdly, for a higher mortality. And the risk uh, for mortality increases with, uh, with age, with a number of prior therapies, uh, is uh, related to uh, renal function, is uh, associated with high-risk cytogenetics and is also associated with morbidity and with the number of morbidities. So that is now quite clear. So we have to do our utmost to protect our patients against COVID infections. And um, actually the willingness uh, of patients, of myeloma patients, uh, to comply with vaccination recommendations is very high. We did a survey in 335 patients and actually it was much higher uh, as compared to the general population, which is in part understandable. Now, uh, so uh, which vaccines are available? Actually, as you uh, know, we, in Europe and uh, um, North America, uh, there are two types of vaccines presently uh, approved for clinical use. These are the RNA-based vaccines and the vector-based vaccines. But in other parts of the globe, uh, there are other vaccines um, consisting of whole virus, um, uh, um, inactivated whole virus, or only uh, of um, specific peptides from the virus, or uh, virus um, um, mimetics, as we call it, uh, 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 artificial virus. Now, uh, these vaccines uh, render in normal people an astonishingly high um, response rate in terms of antibody production and cellular immunity. But there's something which we need to um, keep in mind. There may be a discordance between the cellular and the humoral immune reactivity in few individual healthy people. So some people may come up without an antibody production but show cellular immunity and vice versa. In myeloma, uh, uh, many patients respond well to the um, uh, vaccines in terms of uh, uh, antibody production or even uh, cellular immunity. But this depends on their uh, individual situation. If they are, have well-controlled disease or if they enjoy to be, or if they are in a precursor um, status of myeloma like MGAS, then uh, they usually have a very good antibody response or 
close to normal, but in case they have ongoing disease, um, uncontrolled disease, uh, in case uh, they uh, receive specific treatment, particularly treatment with uh, antibodies against CD38, uh, PCMA uh, uh, targeted treatment, CAR T cells, then uh, the um, response rate is uh, low and those patients usually don't respond well. So we end up with a proportion of patients which are poorly protected or not protected by their own immune system. So what are the options for those patients? Um, uh, a few months ago, um, antibody mono, a cocktail of monoclonal antibodies has been approved for use in patients with uh, uh, impaired immune system or elderly patients who have come in contact with a COVID positive individual, so uh, who are at high risk to acquire uh, a SARS uh, COVID virus 2 disease. And when you use this monoclonal antibody cocktail, which is from Regen, uh, Regeneron, uh, you just administer 1200 milligrams subcutaneously and you can protect those patients or people from acquiring um, uh, overt COVID disease. Uh, so, uh, uh, and the difference between uh, the um, treated and the placebo treated patients is significant. So that is something which can be considered for patients with myeloma who either have, been, um, have come in contact with a positive person or who face aggressive therapy and will remain unprotected by their own immune system. Otherwise, uh, you can think about the third shot uh, and uh, you may have uh, heard about uh, the FDA decision that they recommend a third shot in uh, a vaccine shot uh, in patients with immune compromised uh, immune system. Uh, and uh, if you do that, if you have been vaccinated with an adenovirus vector um, uh, vaccine first, you should use then for the second or third shot an um, RNA vaccine that gives you a better immune response. If you have been vaccinated with an RNA vaccine, for instance, twice, it doesn't uh, um, help you a lot uh, if you then um, uh, select for a heterologous uh, vaccination using a uh, vector-based vaccine. So th there's a difference between both vaccines. And uh, what we should also mention is, of course, now uh, um, there, uh, we are no longer faced with the original uh, Wuhan strain. There are now plenty of variants uh, called Alpha, uh, Beta, Gamma, Delta, uh, 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 variants and the last one, uh, uh, which all of you certainly are aware of, is the Delta variant. And these variants differ um, uh, in uh, specific areas of the virus, particularly uh, in this uh, uh, spike uh, uh, protein uh, receptor binding domain and uh, the, the mutations they acquire and uh, enables them to. Um, to, to bind to the receptors, ACE receptors, uh, with a higher avidity, and they show a higher transmissibility, but uh, Delta is also associated with uh, uh, poorer protection by antibodies or the immune system induced by vaccines, slightly purer, but they are still uh, working well, but uh, not as well uh, as uh, against the original Wuhan strain. So that is something which we need to consider. So a third shot, uh, a heterologous vaccination can be considered and should be considered in those patients. And uh, in addition, uh, I think also it's not recommended by the Center of Disease Control or by the FDA. In my opinion, it's important to assess the immune response in our patients because this uh, helps us to manage uh, them uh, to recommend uh, uh, further uh, vaccination 
to recommend to continue uh, with uh, uh, social distancing, mask wearing, and uh, to recommend also ring vaccination, meaning that uh, the people, uh, the contact uh, person, uh, the patient is uh, uh, close to in the family and so on, need to be vaccinated as well. And of course, it's clear that the healthcare personnel who cares for patients with multiple myeloma has to be vaccinated, has to prove that they have an active uh, antibody response. When you ask if there are uh, any uh, clear criterion regarding which response uh, uh, protects patients against uh, infection, this is still an open question. But uh, in um, monkeys, we have shown that uh, neutralizing antibodies at a specific threshold protect against infection. And that is what gives us hope that the same principle applies to our patients and to ourselves, that uh, um, high antibody response, particularly neutralizing antibodies and possibly a cellular immune response is protective against uh, the new variants, the Delta variant, and particularly against uh, uh, acquiring symptomatic and particularly uh, severe uh, symptomatic uh, COVID disease. With that saying, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and thank you very much and close here. Thank you.